and welcome to the fourth in my series of Spectrum Noir product reviews, this week on Colour with Claire. Today I'm showing you the Aqua Blend pencils, which is Spectrum Noir's answer to the watercolour pencils. So, these are water soluble, they contain pure artist's grade pigment, there's absolutely nothing else in the lead, there's no fillers or anything like that, it is pure pigment and they are very, very high quality pencils. So before I get into any of the details about them, I just want to show you a picture that I completed. This is from Mythomorphia by Kirby Roseanne. And this is my water dragon. And this is my fire dragon. So these were done completely with the Aqua Blend pencils and some water. And you can just see the absolute beautiful blends and very, very strong pigmentation. A lot of watercolour pencils are quite subtle. Um, and you need to add a lot to the page to give that depth but these are just very very highly pigmented straight off the bat so very very good quality pencil now the pencils themselves have a matte blue barrel they have the spectrum aqua blend name stamped on them in silver and then the name of the color they also have these glossy dipped ends very very similar to the color blend pencils which look like this but obviously you'll know that these are your aqua ones as they're blue. So absolutely gorgeous design, very luxurious looking, very expensive looking, but for a fraction of the price of other high quality artist watercolor pencils. So one thing that should be noted about these pencils is the very, very strong core. Now I believe these are four millimeters in width, these cores, just get a bit of a close up on these cores. They, they fill the entire um, diameter of the core with the pigment, if that makes sense. So very, very thick and absolutely flawless in laying down colour. And the thickness of the lead gives it that strength that you need because just by, de by design, watercolour pencils are uh, incredibly soft they have to be um, to break down quite easily with the water so they are very soft but they are also very strong with that four millimeter core so I'm going to show you the colors that are available there are 120 to collect all together have them here in my little colored pencil pot and they have some absolutely beautiful colors and names as well I'm going to go through the entire chart with you so here is some swatches that I've made. Now in the 24 set of primaries you'll see that we have some really nice bright vivid colours. In the 24 set of essentials there's a lot more earthy tones and also those essential skin tones as well of which there are quite a few different shades. Next up we have the naturals which are your um, grass and your sea and your ocean and your um, deserts and you know landscapes things like that then we have the florals so we have some really pretty shades of uh, carmine and violet and just beautiful flowery shades and then in the 212 packs that are available didn't have a chart for those obviously there are the vivid hues and the earth tones so the vivid hues very very vibrant colors and the earth tones those sort of muted very um, reminiscent of you know soil and nature and foliage and things like that so that's all the colors that are included in the pack and as you can see one side is just colored and the other side has been added with water so you can see that they all break down really really nicely and they're just absolutely incredibly vivid. I just I couldn't believe when I got them how vivid they were. And I'm quite used to using Derwent ink tents, which are really, really intense by nature. Um, but these are absolutely fantastic as well. So we're going to get straight into some demonstrations with these now. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to colour the different elements on this page. This book is The Explorer's Journey by David Haben, and it's got beautiful not quite watercolour paper but certainly very nice toothy paper that works well with these pencils. So as you can see a lot of it is already done but I have left some of the elements blank to show you live so you can see how I do it and um, basically just see it first hand. 
So we've got this strip here that needs to be green to match our background. We've got this cloud here that I'm going to be doing in the same periwinkle blues. We've got the planet which I'm going to be doing in red and oranges. And then just down here we've got this rocky area and this bit of sea which I've already gone over with pencil but I've not yet done with the water so I'll be doing all that now. Right, first of all I'm going to show you how to do the green. So with this being a red planet, these being sort of grey blue clouds and then having you know the, the brown down here I thought it'd be great to have a green background because there's no green anywhere else and it will also look a little bit northern lightsy reminiscent of it anyway um, because the artist has put in these wavy lines in the background so I don't know I just thought I'd like the green to contrast against the red of the planet so first of all what I would do is just decide where to put which colour so at the moment I have this one down here quite dark green at this edge then light green then dark green some dark green here and a light green so I'm going to do the edge of this one with a dark green just so we've got a contrast on each band so using these pencils really is so so simple it's just a case of scribbling the colour down and letting the water do the work so I'm going to do this whole edge in green. I'm not putting much pressure on at all and I'm just using these light scumbling motions. The great thing about these pencils is that you can go in after they've dried and apply more layers so if you have an area that you don't think is intense enough with colour you can just go straight back in add more pencil add more water hey presto you've got an even deeper contrast so they're really versatile in the way that you can just go back in and keep adding and building layers obviously it does depend on the paper and what that certain paper can take in terms of layering water on it but you really don't need to use a lot of water at all um, very minimal amount on the brush making sure that you've got some kitchen roll handy just to wipe any excess water off and obviously that will help the pages not to buckle So absolutely no skill required whatsoever for this. You're literally just scribbling colour onto the rough areas of where you want it to be. So I think that's about it for the dark green, which is the verdant green. And I'm coming in now with the parakeet green, which is a nice grass green quite light and limey and I'm just going over what we've put down no precision whatsoever just laying that pigment right down onto the page and as I say I am using a very light pressure if I was using a harder pressure there'd be a lot more um, intensity to the colour obviously don't let that put you off it is only because I'm using a very light pressure at the moment I used to be one of these colourists who would just go in with completely burnished heavy pressure immediately um, because I just want everything to look as if it's been printed rather than have any lines or anything um, and I'm now learning slowly that layers, building layers is the way to go um, to make the most realistic and effective colouring really. So I'm just going back in with that dark green just to soften this edge a little. Make this a little bit darker around here on this curve. And then with our parakeet green just filling in 
the blanks. Okay, so we've very, very roughly filled in all of our white areas on this section of the page. And it's now time for the fun part, adding all the water. So I have a cup of water here with my paintbrush and I've also got my kitchen roll ready to absorb some of that excess water. And let's get started here on this really intense bit down here. So literally all I'm doing is brushing very, very lightly across the surface of the paper. And you'll notice that all the extraness white toothy bits are becoming solid with colour as the pigment is breaking down. Now there is a line between this dark green and light green, but as we keep lightly feathering the brush over the paper, you'll see that that line begins to melt away. And we have a nice blend of color. Now, if there is an area that you're unhappy with, um, maybe you don't think that it's blended enough. As I say, you just wait for it to dry and come back in with your pencils as you would with a normal coloured pencil to try and refine that blend a little bit more and then back in with your water if needs be. So it's these pencils are something you can really have a good play with and just keep going and going until you've got the effect that you want. Obviously, the harder you press on the page and the more pigment you lay down onto the page, the more intense your colour is going to be. So, if it isn't intense enough, you just add more. And if it's too muted, you can... Sorry, if it's too intense, you can mute it a little bit by adding water, which will melt those pigments away. So it really is very versatile. There's a lot of colourists out there who know exactly how to use coloured pencils, but they have no idea about watercolouring and you know making your illustration have a very painterly look. And that's exactly what watercolour pencils do. Um, you know by nature so if you are someone who enjoys pencil colouring but you just want to have a beautiful painted look rather than um, you know block pencil lines or solid colours watercolour pencils is a good way to get you started with painting rather than colouring obviously there are watercolour artists out there who just use paint and that's great and brilliant but if you want to get that effect without having the, the knowledge of watercolouring, you can use your pencil skills, or you know, not even skills, you can just use pencils, lay them down on the page, and then simply just wash over with water. And that gives you the same look as if you had painted it with watercolour paints. So that's pretty much all covered in water now and pretty much blended. Like I say, if there is any areas you're unhappy with, you just add more water or add more pencil. Really as simple as that. Okay, so I'll let that dry now and if there's any areas that I'm not happy with, I can go back in. Uh, this here looks a little bit too much of a strong line, so I'll probably just flick in some more of that dark green when it's dry. Okay, so next up we're going to do this cloud here and for that I'll be using the powder blue and the blueberry for the darker bit. So clouds are often grey and purple and um, sort of teacup blue colours 
that's why I chose blue to contrast with the green and the red because nobody really wants to leave their clouds just white so it's nice to get a bit of depth and dimension on the clouds by giving it an outline with a deeper colour and then fading it out towards the white to get that impression of a cloud so I've got the blueberry colour and I'm going around all the edges of the clouds so the bottom edge and then this here will be another cloud so I'm going to go over the top of that as it's going to be the bottom edge of this one here Now I am not um, very adept with watercolour pencils, it's not something that I use um, a lot of the time in my colouring, I tend to stick to pencils or markers. Watercolouring, not something I have a lot of skill in, um, so you guys could probably make a much better job of this than me. Um, obviously this is just a demonstration to show you how the pencils lay down and how they work and all the pigment and stuff like that so I would love to know if any of you guys have these pencils and I'd love to see some of your artwork as well you can always catch me on the Facebook page Colour with Claire I'm also on Twitter I'm on Instagram I have a blog colourwithclaire.com uh, I'm on Pinterest I'm pretty much everywhere I get about on the internet <laughs> so just type in Colour with Claire pretty much anywhere and I'll be there so if you ever want to get in touch, Facebook page is probably the best for sending me photos or tagging me in Instagram. And if you just want to leave comments and things, you can do that in either the YouTube description or the, de the description of uh, the post on my blog. So that is all the dark bits of the cloud. Now I'm going to come in with the powder blue and go just over the line that we've made with the blueberry just to try and soften that edge out a little bit and don't go right the way up to the top of the cloud because we do want to leave a little bit of a white highlight just to give that impression of it being a cloud that maybe has sunlight coming onto it This tip has gone really wonky for some reason. Oh, that's that's why, that's the reason. Let me just sharpen it up a little bit. It happens. That's what happens when you do live videos without editing. You'll inevitably get a breakage or some sort of problem with the pencil that you're trying to tell everyone is really good, but they are really good. Pencils just break sometimes. And these really are so soft and crumbly um, and that is their intention to be quite crumbly. Um, they are strong in the way that they've got that really thick lead but when you're colouring with them you do notice bits of crumble and dust and that is perfect because once you put water on that dust that's going to melt and add to the intensity of the pigment if that makes sense. So you do want soft pencils when you're dealing with watercolour pencils. You definitely don't want hard leads, otherwise you're just not get, going to get any nice um, blends at all. Okay, so that's the basics of the cloud with the pencil. Got my paintbrush and I'm going to start this time from the white because I don't want to contaminate that with the darker colours. Very, very simply just going over the colour that I've put down. If you do have a lot of water on the brush you'll notice that the colour starts to pool in one area but you can always move that. The great thing about these is you can just shift the colours where you want them.
So that blue that we put in, the powder blue, is merging with the darker, um, the darker blueberry. And it gets to the point where you can't really see the powder blue much anymore. But that doesn't make it useless. The whole reason why we've added that powder blue is to make a, a bit of a softer blend between the white at the top of the cloud and the blueberry at the bottom of the cloud. So if we didn't have that blue, it wouldn't be as nice a blend. But it's just playing around with it. You could go from, from blueberry to white and just have nothing in between, but I think it's quite nice in a cloud to have a bit of blue. It gives the impression that it's reflecting the sky a little bit, even though our sky is green, it doesn't matter. The great thing about art is that you can't make a mistake, so <laughs> you just do whatever comes into your head, whatever colours you want to use, it's all good. Whatever mistakes you make going out of the lines, don't worry about it, because I don't. I used to be a real, you know, perfectionist and I'd hate it if something went out of a line or, you know, just didn't look absolute perfection because you see all these other colorists who are so amazing and their work just looks like it's been printed off, you know, it's, it's incredible um, and it can sometimes be a bit disheartening but then I realized, you know, instead of letting that dishearten me, just be completely, you know, in awe and praise of their work and at the same time carry on doing your thing you know there's there's no wrong answers in art and it's all subjective anyway so what you think might be absolutely stunning somebody else isn't fussed by and vice versa so there really is no point worrying or trying to compare yourself someone's always going to dislike your art and someone's always going to like it so that is the basics of the cloud. Now you might be able to see here that it's quite considerably darker at the bottom of this cloud and this cloud. And that's because I've gone back in after it's dried and added a bit more of that blueberry to the bottom just to deepen that a little bit more. And I'll be doing exactly the same thing on that cloud as well. So let's move on to the planet. The colors I've chosen for this are rustic red, cherry and pineapple. So we have a real deep sort of maroony red, um, a nice a nice bright orangey red and a lovely golden yellow. So they're going to play really nice together hopefully. So I'm going to go in with the darkest one. I'm going to ignore the lines on this planet for now and just put colour down absolutely anywhere, just randomly. I'm not going to make it too linear, it's going to look just, just really random. So, a bit of that there, a bit of that here. And another tip with watercolour pencils is you don't want lines really showing. So, try not to keep your pencils too sharp. This one is sharp, but it's got a, a, um, a flattened end that I've made just by colouring this. And that gives it the softness that you need as well. You don't want harsh, sharp lines. Sometimes I even colour with the side of the pencil just to make it an even softer, smoother lay down on the paper. So I think that will do for our rustic red. Let's come in with our second darkest colour which is cherry and we can also just put that anywhere anywhere you want absolutely zero precision required which is great for me if you've been watching the channel for a while and reading my blog for a while you know that I really can't be bothered with being precise I'm just I'm a Gemini I get bored easily and I want things done and out of the way so I can move on to the next thing um, and that's why you'll often see my work gone out of the lines and things like that. So this is great for me. <laughs> so I've left some um, white space there and we'll go in with our pineapple colour and just fill in that space really roughly. Now 
Now with these pencils, obviously you can layer over the top of all the colours. So I'm just going to get a bit of orange going on here. We don't want it to be too red. And just before I add the water, I am just going to make this rustic red a little bit darker because I'm aware that it's quite similar to that cherry red. Is it cherry red? Yeah. So I just want to have a bit more contrast. Okay, so we've got a fair amount of colour on there now. Let's get in with our water. So I'm going to start with the lightest, with this yellow, and just cover it in water. I'm not being not being precise at all, just covering it with water. And on this I'm actually going to use a bit more of a wetter brush because I just want to lay water down and sort of let, let the pigments do their thing on this bit. Sometimes it's nice just to give it a wash and watch, watch what it does. One brilliant thing that you can do with these pencils is you can lay down the pigment like I just did and then use a spritzer bottle of water, you know like those little spray bottles that you can get and just spritz water on it and just watch it merge and move. It's absolutely fantastic. Making sure we've got plenty of water there. So we've got quite a bit of water on there now, I should say. Uh, totally gone out of the line there and just completely made an absolute mess of it, but don't care. So I'm just going to add a bit more water to where I've just made this mess. Let's see if I can just pick it up a little bit with this kitchen roll. Yeah, I might add some more green or I might even do a glow around it, hey. So we have still got a lot of water on this, it's not dry at all, but I'm going to go back in with the pineapple and just give a little bit more pigment there. So you can do this while it's still wet. And you can just clean your pencil on that kitchen roll and it's not being contaminated by yeah. the other colour. Okay. So really it's just up to you the look that you're going for. But I just wanted this to look a little bit fiery and a merge and amalgamation of all these different So I've just highlighted some of these small details here. Just to give the plan. 
planet a little bit more um, interest to the eye and a few different sort of dimensions to it, a few different areas and plains and peaks and valleys and things like that. So again, going in with the brush. I'm not going to apply too much water this time because I really want to keep those areas quite defined. So I'm pretty happy with that. I wanted it to look, you know, quite um, with the colours here and there and everywhere. So I think I've done a pretty good job of that. It's not perfect. Um, now I'm going to move on to the bottom here. And where I put this pigment, I'm just going to go over it completely with water. I'm not going to spend time getting into every single line that I've put down because just a simple wash of water will activate the pigment, drag it down into the white bits and make it look as if it's sort of multi-layered, which the rock looks to be anyway. So we've got the darker portions of the rock and the lighter portions, and we don't really need to do much with that at all. Now again with this bit of sea, this bit of ocean here, I've already coloured coloured it leaving no white, so all I'm going to have to do is just go over to smooth it out. It's not going to require much precision at all. So I have made a little bit of a hash of that planet with it going out of the lines and stuff. It's not the best piece of work I've ever done, but hopefully this demonstration has enlightened you to all the different things, the capabilities of what you can do with the Spectra Noir Water Blend, uh, Aqua Blend watercolour pencils. So what I'll probably be doing is either giving that a green band, like a glow around it, just to hide that, or I might just leave it as it is. But um, I really hope you've enjoyed watching this demonstration, and I'm now going to give you a little bit of information about pricing and availability. Okay, so you can buy these pencils either on Amazon or on Crafters Companion, depending on where you are in the world um, and whatever is easiest and cheapest for you. So on Amazon UK at the moment, the entire set of 120, that's the four 24 packs and the two 12 packs, are on sale for £61. Absolutely incredible price for the entire set of 120. As I've mentioned earlier, you're getting an incredibly thick and strong pencil with pure artist pigment, artist grade pigment inside, you know, giving a very, very vivid and vibrant lay down. So absolutely incredible pencils. When you think about other artist grade pencils, watercolour pencils, you can be paying two, three, four pounds a pencil. This works out at under a pound a pencil, I think. Um, well, it would do if they were full price. It's much, much lower than a pound a pencil um, for 61 pounds. So absolute bargain there i'll be leaving the links in the description but if you did want to buy um individual packs you can buy the 24 packs for around about 22 pounds and if you're on crafters companion they're around about 30 pounds for those 24 sets the 12 sets can be bought on amazon by themselves as well for around about 16 17 pounds and on crafters companion for around yeah the same, £17. So pretty similar prices wherever you go. Links for the US and elsewhere will also be in the description. I hope you've enjoyed this very quick look at the Spectra Noir Aqua Blend watercolour pencils. They're absolutely lovely. They feel, look and perform like a high quality pencil for a fraction of the price. So I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.